Okay, sorry about that. We're back again and uh, we're recording with the internal microphone as I have problems with the uh, with my Bluetooth uh, headphones. So the last thing we were talking about was the uh, create token and uh, the idea is we just send the email or whatever information and we hash it using uh, JWT and in the login uh, endpoint where you get the username and password from the request body we make sure that they are the same and if they are if they are not we send 401 with a message that says uh, invalid credentials or any message you want and then we create the token and we send it back in the response with a status 200 uh, let's hook that let's hook that up in the client and uh, make sure that we get this value in uh, in the client so let's go back to the login component that we created a while ago and to save your time, I'm not gonna login component. I'm not gonna write the whole thing uh, right now, but I'm just gonna copy what I did before. So the change now from what we did is gonna be in the on submit. So only here. So I'm just gonna paste the whole file. And no, okay, uh, so which okay, I'm just gonna copy these things. So this is the change. So on uh, on submit, we're gonna call slash API slash oath slash login. And uh, if you did not follow, we have in the routes slash index, we hooked up well, uh, the oath route under oath and everything is under api so under api slash oath we have this and if we go to the oath route we uh, we have only one endpoint one post endpoint called login and it calls a function called login from the oath controller which we just uh, went through so going back to the client uh, sorry to the uh, component we're going to create a fetch method to this endpoint type post and the body is going to be the state uh, the user which is an email and password so it's just email and password and we take it as is send it back to the client and we get them from two inputs uh, right here so we have one type email one type password when you submit we get the values and uh, we're going to stringify them as json content type application json and when we get the result, we're going to convert the result to JSON and console log it. Uh, but if it's successful, I know that I sent two things in the response, a message and a token, if it's successful. So I'm going to get the response to the token, and I'm going to save it directly in the local storage. And this is the third thing that we're going to, uh, third concept that we're going to discuss today, which is the local storage. Now, local storage is something that's available in most browsers. Some people um, check if local storage exists beforehand. So they would do if local storage do that. Uh, but I think you guys, uh, you should just use the latest Chrome browser and you're not going to need to worry about that right now. Uh, so hopefully you're not going to uh, face any problems. So local storage is something that exists in all the, new, all the uh, latest browsers and exists for a while. So the way we do it, we, we can do a lot of things, but the basic usage is set item and you give it a key and a value and this value can be anything and then you have get item and you give it a key it returns a value and you have remove item so you have get set remove you can save values and uh, we're going to see this in the browser once once this actually works so uh, we get the token from from the client once the login is successful we save it in the local storage and then i will redirect to the home page Let's see this uh, working in the front end. So I'm going to switch to this page. I need the uh, the username and password that uh, we used. It was hest dot uh, was hest at hackyoufuture.com, and the password was Jacob Jacob uh, with a C. And I'm going to submit. It went back to the front end uh, to the home page, meaning it was successful. And now we should get something in the local storage. So I'm going to open the browser uh, console. And I'm going to go to a tab called application. 
I'm using Chrome, by the way, uh, not Firefox. So it might be different in, uh, in different browser and in different places. And under application and in, in, in DevTools, if you can see it, by the way, you can uh, go through the, these uh, menus and in more tools, and then you can see different things. So if it's not available here, you can search for it. But under the application tab, you have something called storage under uh, local storage under storage. I'm going to expand that, and then we get the site called localhost 3000. So it saves for this site, and then we get three values. So web back dev server saves something, and I don't know what's a dashboard, but we get something called auth token, and we get this weird looking string with the full value here. Uh, so why was it called auth token? Because I called it auth token when I saved. It could be called anything could be just called token, authentication token, whatever. But the idea is we save the token somewhere with a value that we're gonna get again in the future. So uh, let's look again at the controller. Uh, I'm gonna go through these. Okay, let's, I'm gonna skip these two for now. I'm gonna go back to them in five minutes, uh, but I'm gonna commit the changes that we have so far so at least we have a working point. So we have the login now, the login goes to the back end, verifies that the user uh, is correct, and uh, goes back to the client, and uh, gets a token, saves it in local storage, and now we're gonna use that. But I wanna save all the uh, packages that we had, so I'm gonna add the last one, so I don't have to add any packages again. It's called class names. We're gonna need it uh, at the end of this video. Um, it's really easy to use, you can check if the uh, documentation is going to take five minutes from your time. And we're going to go through that. I uh, just want to save all it in, uh, in the same commit. So in this component, uh, I'm going to save uh, the login. Let's save this last. I'm going to add the controller route and index. Add both controller route. Update the on submit in login component to submit the user info, the user credentials, and uh, save the token to local storage uh, on success. So what if it failed? So what if we go to login and uh, we type something that's not correct? So let's say has to, or let's say has with a different, or well, let's do this and uh, let's check the network. So let's confirm that the login is actually secure. We're gonna submit this. What did it return? Oh, uh, okay, we, we redirected after login, after success and failure, we should redirect only in success. So that's a mistake. Uh, but in the, in the network request here, in the login, I got uh, invalid credentials and 401 as a status code. And uh, let's confirm that when I type the correct credential, I saved it, so I got it again. I'm going to submit that, and I'm going to go to the new one, and I got 200 OK. And in the response, I would get success true and, and get a token. OK, what if I didn't change the email but change the password to just add some stuff here? I'm going to submit, I'm going to get a third one, and oh my, is breaking. Or maybe I did something wrong. Okay, there's something wrong with the code I wrote. Nope, there's not. Preview. Error equal by trying proxy. I am not sure why. I'm going to clean that. So now 504, meaning that the code is not working. So server failed for some reason. So I will have to check the login method maybe after the, the video and, and confirm why that is correct. Uh, but if it failed, we can just check that the username equal uh, the email equals email and uh, password equals password without the solve for now. Uh, but I will check check that later. It's the same concept anyway. 
So going back to this, uh, there might be a problem here, so I'm just going to with enter to do confirm that password compare is working properly. So I'm going to go to the login. I'm going to clear submit again. It's pending. Wait until slash finished. Trying to request error connection refused. Server is running on. I am not sure why not. Why it's not working. Jacob. I'm not sure why, if it's really slow or just uh, something wrong with this. So this got the token, so now it's working. Let's go to another login again. And uh, we're gonna choose this and we're gonna go with Jacob. So here. Trying to proxy request. There's a proxy problem. Well, it works as basic info. Okay, I'm not gonna dig even that again to save time. So here we have the oath, and this is the to do. I'm gonna add this and I'm gonna get commit to hash m. So I get the response and type the incorrect password. Let's see this though. If this returns a token, then uh, there's something wrong in, in the compare method. I would have to check it out. Quest is not finished yet. Okay, it's returned the token, so the compare method is not working. Uh, I will fix this and get get back to you after the after the video. But if that is not working, as as we want, working we could create another function that compares pass equals password and then uncomment the original password just for now, just until we check the uh, problem with the salt thing. So now we ignored the salt encryption and we're gonna go just to plain old uh, password and that should work. If that, if that doesn't work, then uh, then there's something I can't see. We're gonna check this one last time. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna submit and it's 405. Oh god, what's 405? Invalid credentials. So uh, this time it returned and it said invalid credentials, meaning that the password did not match and that chicken info returned false. So there's something wrong here uh, that I'll fix later. Let's continue with the component, the login component. We need to only in the success so here the response, I'm not sure why it is sending even an error. There's something wrong here, it should not do this, but let's ignore this as well. You guys can fix that. 
Cool. So we have the login. And uh, now we were going to authenticate only one endpoint, meaning we're going to go through any of the endpoint that deletes. So let's go to events uh, form, for example. So in the events page, we have a delete button. So let's render. Nope, in the events list view, maybe. So what I want to do now is uh, send the token in in the request when we delete or edit in the event card. So I just want anything in the event. Oh, sorry, it's an events for. So here, gonna go down to where we uh, submit. So here in submit form, ah, oh, just stop. In uh, submit form, if editing or adding, you call this fetch, and uh, the the method is different based on uh, the type. But in both cases, we need authorization. So we need to add the header here. We need to add something called authorization. And it's just a header. And we're going to send the token value that we got from local storage. So here we're going to do local storage dot get item of auth token. And I'm just going to send it as is. Why authorization? Because this is the standard format of sending authorization to the server. And I'm just getting the token that we got when we, lo when we logged in. Uh, why are you giving me an error? Okay, now the error is gone. So now I want to delete an event and make sure that when I delete the event, uh, the, the token is being sent to the client and then we're gonna protect the end the edit and delete event endpoints from the server and request that always we have this token available and uh, make sure that if the token is not available then it throws an error so i'm gonna go to this And I'm gonna clear all the all of these. I'm gonna click delete. Delete it successfully. I did not see the message. Hidden event. Error. So localhost edit one and in the headers. Okay, we did not get that header. Because maybe the page didn't load yet. So let's go back to events. Try to delete another one. Ah, oh, delete. Oh, we, uh, we, we made the edit, not the delete yet. That's my bad. So I'm just going to edit another one. And we only change the delete, uh, sorry, the, the add or edit, so I'm going to edit. And I'm going to do anything here, doesn't matter. And then I'm going to submit. And I will... Okay. Submit the value. And here, I'm going to open the request. This is all in the form, but I get the authorization undefined because maybe I don't have it in the local storage because I'm not logged in. Let's log in, submit. Now we have the token. Let's go back to events and edit. One of the things we're going to do a little bit uh, uh, in a little bit of time 
is we're, we're gonna disable the edit button if this uh, auth token doesn't exist, which means the user is not logged in. So we have the date, and we're gonna just go here and do this. And we're gonna go all the way down. And we're just gonna submit this. Gonna go back to the network. And I should have seen before, but when was the last one? This is an image. This should be the last, maybe this. We get the authorization header with the value of the token. Okay, that doesn't mean anything yet because we're not checking for this value in the server uh, and protecting the endpoint. So we're gonna do one of the last main steps. We're gonna go to the controller of the events And actually, I'm going to go to the route of the events, not the controller. So here, I want to add another layer of protection to protect the create, update, and delete endpoints and check that there is a token and there is a valid token available. So we're going to need to do some things here, here, and there using something called middleware. And middleware is a function that will run before this method that does something. It can do anything. In our case, it's gonna only uh, it's gonna block the execution of the next step if the the token does not exist. So I wrote two methods for that, and the first one is uh, called verify token, and uh, this method takes a token and it verifies that uh, the token that we have is correct and it, it was created using the password that we have here. So uh, JWT to verify the token and it returns true or false. So there is one method, and uh, the other method that we're gonna have is the middleware itself. So this is actually a middleware, not middleware. It does not belong here, but um, it, it's just where I'm gonna put it for now. So it's gonna you guys can take the request, response, and next. So it's very similar to one of the endpoints in the route. And uh, all you're gonna do, we're gonna check request dot headers dot authorization and if it's not there if the request does not contain this we're gonna return 401 and send no credentials sent so if the, if the token is not available we reject the whole request and we just return 401 directly if the verify returns false on this token if this token could not be verified we again return 401 and send invalid credentials sent meaning someone changed the value of this token, we cannot accept that. There are other ways to check the expiry that the token is not expired. So if you have a token in the client, people set the expiry date to, to one hour in the future, and no one can change that but, but the server. So the token is only available for an hour. That's why if you go to a website and you log in and uh, you come back in, in a couple of hours or in a day or two, sometimes two weeks, you get logged out automatically because the token you have gets expired and then the, the whole thing just collapses because you're not gonna uh, get the value and the first response is gonna return uh, token expired then you're gonna go back to the login page again uh, but we're not gonna do this just for simplicity so uh, if the token is valid uh, is invalid uh, we return 401 if it didn't uh, return in both of these we just go to the next one so that's a middleware it doesn't actually execute any code it either returns something or goes to the next. So we're going to use this one in the both, yeah, sorry, in the uh, events route. And all we're going to do is events.js. It's going to copy what I wrote before. So the change here is we're going to get the authenticated route, which is the middleware we just wrote from uh, whatever uh, place we have, which is the controllers slash auth. And we're gonna just call it right before the create and update and delete event. We could call it each one of them, but in our requirement, we wanted the, the get all and get by ID to be available to everyone. So you do not need to be uh, logged in 
to be able to get but you need to be able to you need to be uh, logged in to be able to post put or delete so that's how we protect these routes okay let's give it a try and uh, make sure that it works we're gonna remove the token from here so we're gonna delete that so now we're not logged in anymore and we're gonna try to delete it's clean and let's delete and it returned 401 no credential sent and this hit the first one of the authenticated route that the authorization was not sent it was just empty uh, and it, it returned this message let's create another token but let's change in that so let's log in and this login will create another token and we'll add it to uh, the local storage because we use set item and I'm just gonna play with that I'm just gonna do just a bunch of stuff I'm just gonna change the value and do something in the back here and do something here and I'm just messing with the whole thing and uh, let's go to events and let's edit one of them and uh, just wait until it loads I'm gonna delete go to the network so that's edit it probably worked which is weird no we don't have the event here let's clean the thing go back to events just see so slash events slash edit slash two slash five anything okay I'm gonna clear this then I'm gonna delete event okay it gave me 401 and I hope that the message will be different still no credentials sent let's check the headers and I'm sure that we have the oath token but here oh, again the delete event we're not sending the uh, the thing we only set it in the edit and add that is me just not being focused so apologies for that okay so we can just go to the uh, the place where we actually delete and change that and just copy it from here and go to the edit and let's search where do we have the pitch and the whole code so in edit event that's component that mount in the events form in the detail view that's where we have the delete maybe here so that is one so that's delete event we're gonna add the headers here headers and we're just gonna add authorization to get from local storage so this is where we delete the event we're just gonna hook the authorization from here and now if we refresh this page are you guys uh, still following? can please someone confirm that you guys can hear me well? yeah I'm here, I hear you okay great thanks Sure. So uh, we are uh, we have like one major step left after this, and then I'm gonna switch to the main code and, and show you uh, how can we hook this stuff up in the front end and the back end and, and make it like a real website. So I'm gonna clean this and click delete, and it gave me 500 
uh, invalid token. Uh, so we played with the token, so it's completely invalid, and it just broke. It, it didn't even uh, it didn't even verify. So the invalid token did we send that ourselves, or did the library throw that? So in the oath, this is the middleware. So it didn't even go through the uh, the verify. So it, it it broke here, meaning that if we play with the token, uh, we cannot. Um, we cannot go to the server. So that proves the point. And to prove that it will work, we're gonna go to login again, create another token. So that will refresh the uh, oath token that we have here. And okay, let's make sure that let's delete it. And login again. And we have another value in oath token. So we're gonna go to events and let's just make it faster. And edit five, and we're gonna go to the network, clean everything, and we're gonna delete. So delete event it gave us two hundred, meaning that it went through. So if we don't have the token, it throws an error. If the token is not valid, uh, it throws an error. If the token is valid, then it goes through and does the, the job that it, it used to do before. So how it's done, we have a middleware that is checking for the authorization that it exists and it's valid. And it uses this verify method using the password that we have. And uh, we use this middleware, which is an express uh, middleware. Um, and yeah, once, once we don't have any error, we just go to the next. And next meaning, go to whatever we have next in in what's actually what was what you're actually calling and uh, if we go to the events the next here will be any one of these so just go to the next step which meaning it is uh, is working so that's how we authenticate 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 the uh, edit add or delete we did not confirm that the edit uh, is going is uh, editable so we can do again edit four no, we don't have 45 just go to four and oh, that okay edit event and uh, we already did this before so I'm just gonna add a bunch of stuff I'm gonna go all the way down and I'm gonna submit And it will give me 200. But if I, okay, I'm gonna go to the edit again. If I remove the old token, and I'll go up, and this is the changes that I made. I'm just gonna remove this stuff. I'm just gonna go to then, and I'm gonna go down again. I'm gonna press agree. I'm gonna clear the network. Make sure I have the last thing, and I click submit. I get 500, and this error will be. GWT malformed, meaning that the, uh, the GWT is not bad enough. Uh, usually you would handle these errors and uh, if the submit fails, then you show an error message with the error that you got. But you can see here uh, from the, the preview that you got an error and you got 500 in, uh, in the response. So you can handle your code to show if, if, the, if the status is 200, then that's a success. Otherwise, if anything else, if it's in the 400 or 500 ranges, then it's an error, and you show the error message maybe in a, in a pop-up somewhere. But now it's authenticated. No one actually can create if they're not logged in. So that's a big step now. But the we, we still can access the page. So you can do something that doesn't load the page if the user is not, is not logged in. But even if they logged in and they call the API, the API is not gonna allow them from the server. So the main functionality is there, protecting your endpoints. That is there, you have it. Uh, now the, the main work will be done in the front end to, uh, to make sure that the user is gonna only see the things that they have access to. But let's summarize the, the changes in the back end uh, because now I'm gonna stop working on the old code. I'm gonna switch to, uh, uh, I'm gonna stop working on this code. I'm gonna switch to the old code where I have uh, some tricks here and there to make some things look nice. Uh, we added 
uh, a login page. And in this login page, it's just a normal component where we have an email and password. And in the onSubmit, we submit them to the, our login uh, function or endpoint in the server. And if it's successful, we get a token. We save that in our local storage for uh, later usages. Uh, and we redirect to the home page, and that's that's logged in. Uh, what we're gonna see in a little bit that when you get logged in, we switch the login uh, thing to a logout, and we show your email, so you get the feeling that you're actually logged in. And we're gonna change a little bit of things, and you guys can go on with any changes that you want to do from now on. Uh, so we have the login. Uh, that's the main uh, thing in the front end, and then uh, in the back end. We have a, a route for Oath, and it's basically we have only one route called login. And in this login, uh, it's this method in the controllers that checks uh, that the username and password are correct. And if they are, uh, we create a token for you using JWT, and we return it to the front end. So that's the login. You have an access token that's called an access token. And uh, then the, the front end is required to send this in, in any authenticated endpoint or any endpoint that the server requires the user to be logged in. And then we use this middleware to protect any endpoint. And what it does is it, it checks for the authorization or the token that we send to the client. So we, we require the user to have a token in every endpoint in the headers of every request. And uh, we usually just use authorization because that's the default one. And if it's not there, we throw an error. Uh, and if it's there, we verify the token and we verify it using the same password that we created it with to make sure that it's ours, that it's not someone else's. And uh, if it returns true, then uh, the user is logged in. This is the basic, basic usage. Uh, and again, if you use any library, there are a million things to take care of, that, uh, including uh, the roles that uh, the, the thing is not expired, it could, it could expire an hour or a day or a year, you could set that as in the, uh, in the properties when you create the token uh, in this method. So there are properties that you can send here, but we're not going to go through that. You can definitely check it later uh, or just use one of the libraries, which I, I recommend. This is good enough for, for basic knowledge. Uh, we have a problem here with the password, I'm going to check that later and uh, try to send it in a later update. But uh, you get the idea, you just check the username and password. And if it's encrypted, you just check it using the, the encryption library. So the routes, uh, let's go through the file that we have to make sure that we covered most of the things. Uh, so the logout page we're gonna do in a little bit. I'm gonna show directly implemented. So the login, uh, we have the hard-coded values. We return the token, uh, we save it in the local storage. Uh, 